something in common. The Bible says that, that uh, 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 Barnabas and, 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 and Paul were extended the right hands of fellowship, and thus they were in agreement with uh, what the other apostles and disciples were doing. But, you know, if you, hear, if you were to hear that two different people or two different groups of people were together and you knew that in the past they were not really together, that their, that their uh, thought processes or their ideas, their ideology, uh, what they stood for, their beliefs were contrary, but yet you heard that they were together, wouldn't you think that was strange? For example, what if I told you, what if I told you that there was a, an alliance between the Muslims and the Jews? Now, if you know anything about the Muslims and the Jews, you know that they are not in an alliance. They would not be allied. allied. As a matter of fact, one wants to destroy the other. You might say uh, both want to destroy each other. But the whole point about these two groups being together, if they were together in an alliance, you say, that's, that's very strange. They, how can they get along? I mean, we have always been trying to find uh, different presidents, different administrations, different world leaders have trying to been, get together having peace conferences in the Middle East since, really, I guess since uh, 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 Ishmael <clears throat> and Isaac came along. That's really what we're talking about. We're talking about they can't get along. They've been over chucking rocks and missing anything else at each other because they hate each other. And so if you say, well, those two people are together, those two groups of people are together, that, that's strange. There must be a really bad enemy for them to put aside their differences and say, hey, let's get together. Let's work for the common good because that would just be something very, very strange. Well, that, that's what we're talking about here. Now, as far as I know, there's not an alliance between Muslims and Jews. Now, maybe some are trying to make some inroads, but as far as major an alliance, there's not one. Now, what if I told you this? What if I said, what if I said that PETA, <clears throat> people for the ethical treatment of animals, what if I said they're going to have a big cookout down here at the park? You'd say, wait a minute, that's a strange alliance. What, what do you mean? What do you mean? That, that doesn't go together. PETA is opposed to people eating meat, killing animals. <clears throat> I heard our local PETA representative, I guess, uh, uh, an atheist and, and uh, agnostic on the bus today called in and said he was glad to hear that this little store down here in Reedsville was, wasn't selling real furs. Because, <clears throat> um, you know, he, he's glad that there were PETA people like he was. Now, I, don't, I didn't hear him mention the fact that he still likes to eat meat. And I didn't hear him mention the fact that he wears, I, I'm, I'm assuming, leather boots, you know, maybe some leathers when he's riding his motorcycle that probably has a leather seat on it, and maybe leather car interior. I don't, I don't know. I don't know. But he, I guess you can be a PETA person. Or can you? Can you be a, a PETA person? Can you be someone who represents PETA or says they're with PETA and still eat meat and have leather and kill cows and stuff. I mean, animals had to die for, you know, for leather and maybe some of the clothes you wear, the things in your house. So is, if I said that, if someone said, well, I'm, I'm with PETA, yeah, boy, I sure like a good thick steak. Some, that's a strange alliance. That, that's, kind of, that's kind of strange. Can, can that really be the case? Or what about this? Let me give you another one. What about this? What about the local scientist, atheist evolutionist, and the homosexual who says, well, I'm born this way. Now, science, science has dug deep, and they have, they have researched and has proven there's no gay gene. There's nothing that, that makes people born this way. Biologically, it's impossible for someone to say, I'm born this way. Yet the homosexual says, I'm born this way. Well, the evolutionist sits right beside him and says, well, you know what? I'm all right with homosexuals. I'm a humanist. I think if it feels good, do it. But what are they going to do when it comes down to what makes you a homosexual? That's, going, that's a strange alliance for the evolutionist to have to say, well, yeah, you're born that way. Either he's going to have to give up the science part and the evolutionist part or the homosexuals are going to have to give up the I'm born this way part. What, which one is it? You see? And my point, friends, is this. If you have two groups or two people 
that have opposing ideas, beliefs, philosophies, whatever it may be, for them to be truly aligned, for there to be a true alliance and a unity, somebody has to give. Because otherwise, people will say, that's strange. That's, how could that be the case? How could those two people be together? Let me give you one more. What if I told you that the Ku Klux Klan is now, is now accepting in their membership gay black Jews? Look at this. Look at this. Well, what about strange? Look at this. Here's the, here's the gay, gay black Jewish Klansman in Smyrna, Georgia. Now, now I'm pretty sure that's, that's probably something made up, a spoof. But if that was really the case, gay, black, Jewish, Klansmen? What? That, that can't go together. Did you see what I'm saying? Now, now if, you, if you saw that, and you said, that, that can't be legitimate. Now, why would you laugh about that? Why do you see that and laugh? I, I showed this picture to some people, and they, they just laughed. Because they know that that is, I mean, there, there has to be a, we're living in a twilight zone or something, a rift in the space-time continuum for that to take place for gay black Jew to be accepted into the Klan see friends because that's a strange alliance that, that, that just cannot go together that doesn't go together but why is it then that we look at these things and say they don't go together because we know they are diametrically opposed to each other they just do not go together they cannot go together unless someone has given up something Unless someone backs down and says, you know what, I think that's all right now. Let's say, for, a ma for example, the, the Church of the Latter-day Saints. You know, up until the 70s, they wouldn't let black people into the church. They wouldn't let black people into the, the, the Church of the Latter-day Saints. Now, something had to change because now it's okay. If you're, if you're black and you want to be a member of the uh, Latter-day Saints, that's fine with them. Well, somebody had to change. Something had to change. And so if you see something that is diametrically opposed, you know that there has to be some agreement or some compromise. Something has to happen for two people to be together and be in an alliance. Amos said in Amos 3, in verse 3, can two walk together except they be agreed? So, friends, what we're saying is here is a, a principle Here's a principle that we all understand. If you see two groups that are working hand in hand together, they must be agreed on something, but if you know that they are opposed to one another or that their beliefs con are contradictory to one another, you say, that, that's strange. I don't think they're really together. I don't think they're really agreed. See that? So what I want you to realize is this. If we're talking about unity, and we're talking about unity the way, the way God wants it. In John, in John chapter uh, 17, notice this, John 17 and verse, we'll start in verse 20. John 17, verse 20, Jesus said, Neither pray I, uh, neither pray I for these alone, but for them also which shall believe on me through their word, that they may all be one, as thou, Father, art in me, and I in thee, that they may also be one in us, that the world may believe that thou hast sent me. So, Jesus prayed for unity. Now, if we're going to really have unity, we're going to really have unity between religious groups or people that are, are, that are opposed to one another in their beliefs or their doctrine, then we're going to have to, then we're going to have to recognize that someone is going to have to give up their belief in order to really walk together. If you see an alliance between individuals that you say, there's no way those two people are going together. Somebody has to give up their belief in order for it to, to really happen. And friends, it may be that if we're really trying to have unity like God desires, we need to all step back and take a look and say, now, <clears throat> if there's something in the Bible that I'm doing that's contrary to the Bible, I'm going to have to give it up. I'm going to have to give up that belief that I'm holding to in order to walk together with people who are doing what's right. All right? 
Now, let's look at some strange alliances. You see, in 2 Corinthians chapter 6 and verse 14, <clears throat> Paul makes this statement. He said, Be ye not unequally yoked together with unbelievers. For what fellowship hath righteousness with unrighteousness? Now, here's what we're talking about, friends. We're not talking about people walking together who have differences of opinion. You may, you may think that coconut cream pie is the best thing in the world. I'm going to disagree with you. I would strongly disagree with you, as a matter of fact. But now you can, you can have that belief if you want to. But when it comes down to truth, and I know there's people out there in our community, they don't like the fact that we, we say there's an objective truth. They don't like that at all, but the bottom line is there is. But if we're going to be unified on the truth, then we have to give up our opinions and just go by what is right. And that's what Paul is saying here. He says, what, uh, what, doth, what fellowship hath righteousness with unrighteousness? Now, if there is a righteousness and an unrighteousness, if there is a good and an evil, if there is a right and there is a wrong, that means there is an objective standard that we all have to adhere to. And Paul is saying, what does righteousness have to do with unrighteousness? You should not be together. You cannot have an alliance with wickedness. He said, in what communion hath light with darkness? If you go into a completely dark room and turn on a light, light and darkness do not mix. Darkness runs away. It leaves. Because light and dark don't, don't exist. Even a little bit of light makes darkness repel. All right? Now Paul is saying, what do these two things have in common? They just don't mix. Be ye not unequally yoked together with unbelievers. Now, one of, the, one of the sisters made this comment in class tonight. She said, you know, if we hear this verse a lot, and it's true. We hear this verse a lot, and people, they'll stop and say, be not unequally yoked together. And they'll say, well, that means whites and blacks can't marry. Oh, that's not what it's saying. That's not what it's saying. It's not saying anything about interracial marriages. What it's talking about is being not unequally yoked together with unbelievers. What makes you unequally yoked is not your race. It's what you believe. It's whether you believe or not. So, so here's what we're talking about. What, what do these two have in common? You cannot put them together. Otherwise, that's a strange alliance. That's a strange alliance. That is, that is something that's, that's foreign, if you will, to the, to the laws of nature. They just don't go together. And so, friends, what we need to realize is we're trying to help people to see that if we're going to have unity, we can't have strange alliances and call it unity. We just can't do this. Now, let me give you another strange alliance. Let me give you another strange alliance. This appeared in the paper uh, a few weeks ago. I guess back in uh, October the 27th, I think is the date on it. Moorhead students establish an alliance club, the Gay Straight Alliance. That's a strange alliance. Because remember, if you are going to be aligned and you are diametrically opposed, you're opposites, somebody's going to have to give up something. And I don't understand why it is all of a sudden and it's really not all of a sudden. It's been going over a few period of uh, time. But why is it now that the homosexual movement insists that everybody else give up their rights, their beliefs, their ideologies, their convictions in order to appease them? I thought, I thought that in a in a society where we tolerate and we have free speech and freedom of expression, and we don't have to compromise. But see, the gay straight alliance is just that. It's a compromise. It's an alliance that insists that the straight people give up, compromise 
their beliefs in order to make this other group not feel so bad. And that's exactly what the article says. The article says it's to promote diversity, uh, to focus on acceptance and awareness. But you know what, friends? I submit to you that they're not very accepting of those individuals who would say homosexuality is, a, is, a, is evil, it's wicked, it's unrighteous, that it's sinful. See that? that, that that's, that's a strange alliance, if you ask me. And I wonder, friends, how many, how many uh, uh, people would come out in opposition if some young student, and I hope that there's some young student over in Moorhead High School, that would make a stand and say, you know what, we're going to form a club too. We're going to form a club that promotes family values. You know? Moorhead Morality Club. You know? America's family values. Uh, you know, just, just start a club. And say, we're going to promote the home and family. And these troubled individuals that have a troubled home life, you know what? We can give them counseling. We can give them support. And we'll support them in the, in the biblical way. I, I challenge you. I dare you. I dare some student at Moorhead High School to start up a club that would actually be something contrary to this club. Now, you know what's going to happen. If that were to be the case, you know what's going to happen. The second club is going to be the one ridiculed. That's why I'm saying, friends and brethren, you've got to say it first. Because if you say it first and someone comes to the, uh, op, you know, opposing you, then, well, they're the ones who's negative. But, friends, that's a strange alliance, is it not? Why is it that you would want to promote and accept someone who's living in a sinful lifestyle, a, a harmful lifestyle, you know, individuals who are in, live in a homosexual lifestyle are more likely to commit suicide. Their life expectancy is shorter. There's a greater risk of, uh, of, uh, of diseases. And we're supposed to accept that, promote that? Why is that, friends? That's a strange alliance, isn't it? To be part of a group that says, hey, yeah, let's, let's, let's promote this. Let's promote this. You ever stop and think about the two terms that they use, the gay-straight alliance? If something is not straight, by definition, it's crooked and perverse, is it not? Now, how can straight promote crooked? How can straight promote perverse? That's, that's a strange alliance, is it not? Listen to what happens. Friends, when you let evil and wickedness get its foot in the door and you say, I'm going to bring it in, I'm going to associate with it, I'm going to pretend like it's okay, wholesome, and good, and fine and dandy, and pretend that people who are living in a lifestyle that is very harmful and risky and dangerous lifestyle are okay, you know what you're doing? You're actually jeopardizing yourself. Listen to this. Here's what the Bible says. In Proverbs 22, verse 24, the wise man said, Make no friendship with an angry man, and with a furious man thou shalt not go. Now, why would that be? Why should, you be? why should you be careful about your alliances, if you will? Why should you be careful about that? Lest thou learn his way and get a snare to thy soul. You see, you are more likely to become like the, the group that you don't want to because... Here's why. Because you have given up on your convictions, your beliefs, and your, your standards. You've said, well, I'm, I'm not going to say anything. I'm not going to oppose it because I'll be thought I'm, I'm the bad guy. Really? Is that really where you want to be? You want to be the person that caves in on what you know is right? All right? But so the Bible is saying you better be careful who you align with, otherwise you'll become like that. Now, Somebody might say, well, I don't think there's, I don't have any problem with, with homosexuals. You know, I'm, I'm a live and let live kind of guy. Well, friends, do you ever stop and think that your live and let live attitude actually has an adverse effect on the entire society? What if everybody said, 
Well, just do what you want to do. It don't bother me. It's going to bother you eventually. It's going to bother you eventually. Probably in the pocketbook first. That's going to get your attention. And then it's going to adversely affect you. Do you ever stop and think that if you're having to pay for health insurance, which that's a big topic today, this, this time in our society, but if you have to pay for your health insurance and you are uh, with a company that also has, now has to insure homosexuals who have a greater risk of health disease, now what does that do to your health cost? It goes up. You don't, like, you don't like reckless drivers raising your insur car insurance rates, do you? You don't like individuals who are driving around with no insurance on their cars, having wrecks, and then, well, they can't pay for it. That makes your insurance rates go up. But now, all of a sudden, people who are living in a very risky, high-risk uh, lifestyle, well, I'm okay. It doesn't bother me. It bothers you. It bothers you. The problem is you're just too afraid to make a stand. So you compromise, and you form an alliance that's actually going to come and hurt you, snare to your soul. Again, listen to what the psalmist said. The psalmist talking about Israel coming out of Egyptian bondage. They brought a mixed multitude with them. Some of the Egyptians came out with them. And listen to what the Bible says. Uh, they came out, this mixed multitude came out, and then uh, that, that caused them some problems in the wilderness. Psalm 106, verse 34, is talking about when Israel came into the promised land. And this is what it says. They did not destroy the nations concerning whom the Lord commanded them, but were mingled among the heathen and learned their works. They were mingled among the heathen and learned their works. That is, Israel learned the heathen's works. They became more like the nations that God said should be destroyed. Now, they were destroyed because God waited until their iniquity was full. Genesis uh, chapter 16, I believe it is, Genesis 16, 15. No, I'm sorry, Genesis 15, 16. Uh, God promised Abraham that when he brings his Abraham's descendants into this promised land, the land of Canaan, that he's going to do so after the inhabitants of the land were completely full of iniquity. That is, there was no hope for them to turn. But the fourth generation, they shall come hither again for the iniquity of the Amorites is not yet full. When a nation gets to the point that there's no turning back, the point of no return, that's when that nation is going to be destroyed. It'll happen to America. It'll happen to the United States. But see, Israel didn't do this. Israel didn't drive out those people, and so the result was they became like those nations, the heathens. Right about, they learned their works. And they served their idols, which were a snare unto them. Friends, when you make an alliance with individuals, when you make an alliance with something that is unholy, when righteousness says, I'm not going to be definitive, distinctive, then by definition you give up and you lose influence and you become more like the world. Now, isn't that a strange alliance? A gay, straight alliance? People who say, well, you know what, this is... This is not the lifestyle. This is not the right lifestyle, but yet you're not going to say anything about it because you've been, you've been cow-toed into, into not saying anything, being kicked enough that people call you a bigot and a, and a homophobe and a hate monger if you say anything about it. No, friends, I'm going to make a stand. And I'm going to say, you know what? I'm not going to step into that alliance. I'm going to oppose what's wicked. I'm going to oppose the evil. All right? I don't, want, I don't want to become like the nations round about me. I want to be distinctive, be different. Why would you help? Why would you help promote something that's not good, that you don't believe in? Would you do that? Would you promote something that you don't believe in? Do you really think that, that the that the uh, uh, Israel, modern-day Israel, is going to go promote 
Hamas or some of these other Al-Qaeda groups, some of these other Islamic groups that want to kill them, do you think they're going to go out and campaign for them and, and, and uh, promote them? Notice what 2 Chronicles 19 to verse 2 says. Jehu, the son of Hananiah, the seer, went out to meet Jehoshaphat and said to the king Jehoshaphat, Shouldest thou help the ungodly and love them that hate the Lord? Therefore, the, the, uh, therefore is the wrath upon thee from before the Lord. Friends, do you really, do you really think that not opposing evil is going to give you a pass? Really what you're doing is you're making, a, maybe a, unknowingly, but you're making an alliance with evil. And all you're doing is incurring the wrath that God has for the evil, evil wicked do, wicked uh, uh, evil doers. You're incurring that wrath upon yourself. Look, First Timothy chapter five. First Timothy chapter five and verse twenty-two. Paul tells Timothy, "Lay hands suddenly upon no man." That is, don't uh, lend your support or lend your uh, approval of a person. Neither be partaker of other man's sins. Keep thyself pure. James says in James chapter 4 and verse 4, Ye adulterers and adulteresses, know ye not that the friendship of the world is enmity with God? Whosoever therefore will be a friend of the world is the enemy of God. Do you realize that if you want to be like the world, you, you, you can't be a friend of God, but do you realize that if you really don't oppose evil, that you're really being like God, uh, like the world as well? You're really not being a friend of God? And so it's a strange alliance to say, I'm going I'm to set it out. Friends, you're either on one side of the fence or the other. You're, you're on one side of the fence or the other. You can't be straddling the fence. There is no middle ground here. Righteousness and unrighteousness, wicked and good, good and evil. You, you can't play both sides. And so it's a strange alliance. It's a strange alliance. You're saying, well, I'm not going to say anything bad about these things. Well, you don't realize, do you not realize that God hates such immorality? Do you realize that God is, is opposed to these things? And yet you're going to say, well, I'm not going to oppose it. Well, then you must be on the side of the evil. In Romans chapter 1, verse 24, God is condemning, God is condemning the, the, the homosexual lifestyle practices. Romans 1, 24, Wherefore God also gave them up to uncleanness through the lust of their own hearts to dishonor their own bodies between themselves, who changed the truth of God to a lie and worshiped and served the creature more than the creator, who is blessed forever, amen, for this cause, God gave them up to vile affections, for even their women did change the natural use unto that which is against nature. And likewise, also the men, leaving the natural use of the woman, burned in their lust one toward another, men with men working that which is unseemly, and receiving in themselves, receiving themselves uh, that recompense of the error which was, uh, which was meat what you deserve you saying, well I, I, I don't I don't do that sort of thing well look what the Bible says in Romans chapter 1 come on down about uh, after listing all these these evil things Paul says knowing the judgment of God that they which commit such things are worthy of death not only do the same but have pleasure in them that do them so either you're with righteousness or you're with the unrighteousness you just can't have it both ways. Why are you helping the ones that God is opposing? That's a strange alliance. Strange alliance. And if you're going to be aligned, remember, if you're going to be in a, a, an alignment, somebody's going to have to give up something in order for there to be harmony and agreement. Someone's going to have to give up something. I want you to consider this. This was a flyer that was put in our mailbox. 
citywide prayer. Citywide prayer at Freedom Park. This was this supposedly took place November 3rd, 30th. And notice what it says. I don't know if you can read that. It says, please join together. Please join together for a time of prayer and thanksgiving for our city, state, and country. We're coming together. Who's coming together? I suppose people from all the religious groups came together for a day of prayer, citywide prayer. Is it not interesting that they can have an alliance on Saturday, November the 30th, but yet on December the 1st, the very next day, they're all going back to their own place of worship with their differences? If they were truly aligned, if they were truly came together, then why, why do they separate the next day to go worship God? If they really want unity like God desires, then why don't they put aside all their differences on Sunday instead of just Saturday? Now, who's praying? And by the way, who's praying? Wasn't this the big... Uh, uh, hoopla that took place over in Pennsylvania County about prayers before before uh, government meetings board of supervisors what, wasn't that the problem oh we're going to pray we're going to pray they don't say prayers anymore do they Not, they, don't, they don't say they don't say those prayers anymore you know why because somebody gave up See, now if they were really convicted on it and they said, we're going to pray, why don't you do like Daniel? Just bow down and pray. Why don't you just, why don't you just look to government in, in, in the eye and say, you know what? I'm going to obey God. You know why? Because they really weren't convicted about it. It's all for show. And then who's going to, and who's going to lead the prayer? See, now you're going to have to let the, you're going to have to let the Jehovah's Witness lead the prayer. The Muslim lead the prayer? Who are you going to pray to, see? So you all have these differences, these differences, and you say, well, we're going to put them together and we're going to pray on November the 30th. Well, if you can pray together on November the 30th, why can't you pray together on December the 1st? You know why? Because it's really it's a strange alliance. It's strange to have, to see all these different religious groups come together all these religious, different religious groups come together, they teach different things, they believe different things, and they come together and say, oh, we're going to be all together. That's strange, isn't it? Isn't that a strange alliance? To say, well, we're going to pray together? And notice, then they have there at the bottom, 2 Chronicles uh, 7, verse 14. Let me put this up on the screen for us. 2 Chronicles 7 and verse 14. If my people, which are called by my name, shall humble themselves and pray and seek my face and turn from their wicked ways. Then I will hear from heaven and will forgive their, and will forgive their sins and I will heal the land. Oh, let's all come together. Everybody that's called by, by my name. And I bet if you went to this so-called alliance prayer meeting that you'd be hard-pressed to find someone that was called a Christian. It's, oh, I'm a Baptist, I'm a Methodist, I'm a Presbyterian, I'm a Lutheran, I'm a Catholic, I'm a, 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 anything but Jesus. Anything but wearing the name. Why? Because, well, we're all different. Well, how's it you praying together? That's a strange alliance, isn't it? Isn't that strange for all these people to come together and say we have unity and they're going to accomplish it contrary to, to what the Bible says, the Bible says that we're going to be they're going to be unified. It's going to be it's going to be unity based upon the Word of God. How is it? How is it that you're going to have unity some other way? I pray not for these alone, but for them also, which shall believe on me through their word, that they all may be one. Unity, true alliance, is going to come through the Bible, through the Word of God. And see, friends, really, when it gets right down to it, when it gets right down to it, people don't really believe 
they really don't believe that the other people are saved. They really don't believe that all these different religious groups are saved, that they're coming together. That's a strange alliance, isn't it? For people to come together and form an alliance, and yet they don't really believe the same? You want to work from the Lord? Hey, how you doing, Brother Jane? I'm doing well. Brother James, you know, um, as you talk about coming together, you remember um, when 9-11 strike in the, in the United States? Yes, sir. Everybody seemed to be on one accord to jump in to let's pray. Let's pray. Every time a disaster happened in the Eastern United States, Everybody willing to pray and show the Christian faith. This the soon as dive down, they go right back to the wicked way of living and doing. That's exactly right. That's exactly right. I just, I just thought I brought that in to support what you were saying tonight. Really enjoying you. Keep up the good work. All right, all right. Appreciate your call. Appreciate your call. Now, friends, so this is what we're talking about. They don't really believe, they don't really believe what they're saying. That's a strange line. Listen, listen, here is a, here is a Jackie Poe, Church of God, a preacher for the Church of God, and listen to what he says about being saved. All right, listen to what he says. When Jesus came to me, I remember when he accepted me. I remember, I remember, some of you forgotten. You might have really pumped the volume up in there. I'll never forget how ungodly and filled with sin I was. And some of the good church members there at the Cliff you Church of God tried to clean me up a little bit. I had a little trouble understanding some of that. Some of them go to the altar and some of them shake me and put their hand under my mouth and do that. I thought, what in the world's going on here? I was just an old Methodist boy got saved. I love the Methodist church, by the way. Still do love that church. Wonderful people there. Taught me the gospel. But I said, what in the world? I never will forget one night I was praising the Lord. And my classroom flew off. All right, so he's in the church of God, or he's, he grew up in the Methodist, just no Methodist boy, just no Methodist boy, but he got saved in the church of God. Well, let's think about this. If you leave the Methodist church and you get saved in the church of God, doesn't that mean that the Methodist church is not saved? Oh, that's a strange alliance, isn't it? Then to turn around and say, I'm with all the Methodist people? Strange alliance. You're on, you're on a word from the Lord. Turn your TV down, please. Yes, sir. Uh, if you could speak on that scripture. Uh, and I'm, lear I'm learning myself. Okay. I'm not, you know, either way, I'm, uh, the scripture where Jesus said anyone that was for him wasn't against him. How about that, sir? Okay. Any, anyone that's for me is not against me. You still there? Okay, I think he hung up. Uh, when Jesus said, uh, you either for me or against me, you know, he, he's showing the, the distinctive line here. You're not, you, you can't be, you, you can't be halfway. You can't, you can't be, uh, uh, you, you can't be straddling the fence. Let me see if we can pull it up here. Uh, get my Bible program going here. Matthew 12 and verse 30. He that is not with me is against me, and he that is not, and he that gathereth not with me scattereth abroad. And that's exactly right. That's what I said a while, a while ago. You can't be on the middle of the fence. You're either on one side or the other. And by the way, let me just say this. I know there's a lot of individuals who are watching this program, meet them on the, on the street all the time. They say, you know, love the program, this, that, and other. 
but you're not with us. You know what you are, friends? Really, you're on the other side of the fence from where we are. You're just pushing on the fence. You ever seen an old cow get up there and try to get some green grass on the other side of the fence? Boy, she stretch that wire and she'll push it and bowl that fence out, but she's still on the other side of the fence. She's not where the grass really is. Friends, why don't you just come on over to the other side? Why don't you come over to the Lord's side? If you really love and appreciate what we're doing, just come on over. Come on over. Obey the gospel and become a member of the, of the Lord's church and join the fight with us. Yeah, you can't, you can't be in the middle. If you're not, if you're not with Christ, you, you're against him. You're against him. Now, remember, remember what we said. If you, if you, if you are not, uh, if you, if you form an alliance, then you've got to give something up. Somebody's got to give something up. I'm going to take one more call here. You want to work from the Lord? Yes, hello. How are you this evening? I'm very well. Well, you know what? I'm the cow on the other side of the fence. Okay. <laughs> I've been watching you. I've been watching you for about three quarters of a year. Before you came on, I believed 100 percent in the Bible, and since you've come on, you've 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 made me question the Bible. Uh, not you personally, but I. Uh, you in your church and all I got to say is you ought to check your facts before you say what you say because the Church of Christ is saying things that are not true okay thank you, and you for, have a for good example evening. well give me an example now a drive-by call there you know who that was um uh, you know the Church of Christ saying things not true thank you that well, won't you tell us what they are? You know, what are they? All right, so, but anyway, so we're compromising. So I'll take that as we don't know. All right, you on the word from the Lord? Yes, James, I'll tell you one thing all of them have in alliance is the love of that mighty green dollar. Okay. They, uh, they will do anything for it and will change their beliefs and their codes and everything. If, if a member comes in and He's gay or whatever, got a lot of money to give towards the congregation. They're going to pat him on the back and say he's the best one around. Right. They want the dollar in their grass. Yeah, you, I, I agree with that. I agree with that. Have a good one. All right, thank you very much. Um, I want to play you. i got a few minutes left here. I'm going to try to play this, uh, this video clip. Here's what we're saying, friends, again. If you're going to be have a true alliance, you're going to be in total agreement or you're not. Now, John says that uh, some went out from us because they were, not, they were not of us. And the whole point of that is, is showing that you're either totally going to be with or, or, you're, to or, or you're going to uh, uh, not be. All right? Now, let's look at this. This, is, this was a... a uh, this was the buzz this afternoon. This is Mr. Stan, Dr. Stan. And uh, listen to what he says, and then I'm going I'm to try to skip it and try to find, he kind of continues a, a thought that I want, to, want you to listen to. But listen to what he says about religion and then about being together. Now you got this new book out. Uh, this is it. This is it. Yeah. It's the ultimate handbook for successful living. It's a book that we wrote after you know, pastoring churches for years and years and years, I kind of got thrown out of the churches because I'm a free-thinking, yeah. uh, self-enlightened individual. Mm -hmm. I'm not good at people telling me what I have to believe and what I can't believe. And churches are pretty much structured where if you're not in the box, yeah. you can get out of here. You right. know, and they have to protect their system. And not even going to like Johnny Robinson's church, what do you say? Oh, yeah, all churches are, have a system and a system that they protect. If you don't go along protect, the system, you got to go, right? you got to go or you can come and sit and be a statue. But some won't let you do that if and you don't go along with the Yeah. So what this book does and... <laughs> all right, let me just say this. All churches have a system. Well, friends, you know what? Is that such a bad thing? I mean, this gentleman sounds like he doesn't want to be told anything, no rules, no regulations. Well, that's, that's kind of what our local... Uh, evolutionist atheist says Let, let's don't have any rules 
But you know what? Everybody is told what to do. Everybody adheres to some rule. You don't believe it? Go get in your car. And I guarantee you're going to drive on the right side of the road. And you say, well, I don't want to drive on the right side of the road. All right, drive on the left side of the road. You're going to be stopped one of three ways. Either you're going to be stopped by the policeman, you're going to be stopped by a head-on collision, or you're going to be stopped because you're killed. But you're going to be stopped. See? You, but we say, well, I drive, I'm driving on the right side of the road. Not because you want to. Because the law says you, you, you are to do that. The government says this is this side of the road you drive on. So everybody's told what to do. Everybody has some rule that you adhere to. Now, why is it? Why is it so strange then that when it comes to uh, worshiping God and serving God, that there would be a set of rules that everybody has to adhere to? All right. Listen now. Listen to what he says. Uh, this was a very good statement that he made here about. Uh, Charles is asking about uh, attending church. Black and white, he says what he means, right. he means what he says. I mean, he is who he is. Right. You know? but, but one of the things that, I mean, you talk about, if you go to Johnny's church, you do have to follow a... Oh, yeah, you, yeah, you got, you got the codes, the prescriptions, the outlines, the interpretations of the way things should be. You know, you're not, you're going to, if you're going to be saved, you've got to right. repent, be I don't think anybody gay and, can feel comfortable at Johnny's church. Do no, I don't, I don't think... Johnny per se hates gay people, but he's going to preach against it, yeah. you know, and if you're in there, he's going to be probably, you know, encouraging someone to, you know, you got to, this is simple, this isn't right, and you shouldn't be doing this, and of course, if you're, if, if it's a gay person, eventually they're either going to repent and agree with that, or they're going to run because they just can't sit there week after week. One, and I, mean, I mean, obviously it's changing even more. All right, so there it is. And, and that's exactly what I'm talking about, friends. That's exactly right. Either people are going to change and give up something, i.e., they're going to repent and change their lifestyle, or they're going to leave. And I'm saying, friends, what we need to do is not be more passive and conciliatory and giving in and say, well, I'm not going to say anything about homosexual lifestyle or or, or gambling, or drinking, or anything like that. I'm not going to say anything about that. You sit back, what you're doing is you're conforming. You are forming an alliance by giving up truth. And what I'm saying is we, in the Church of Christ, are being so distinctive that we want people to realize we want alliance based upon God's truth. Now some people say, well, uh, y'all think y'all got the only truth. And y'all won't, won't budge any. Well, let me tell you this. If I'm out in the middle of a, of a river and I'm drowning and you're on the bank, I don't expect you, if you've got a rope and a, and a lifeline, I expect you to throw the rope out to me. I don't expect you to come jump in the water too. I want you to bring me to where you are. You're on the safe ground. So if we happen to have the truth, why is it all of a sudden I... Now, we're the bad person because we won't budge. Well, excuse me. We're trying to save you from drowning. We're throwing you out the lifeline. And you want us to jump in the water. Well, that's not going to help you, and it's not going to help us either. See? So what we're trying to do is we're trying to show you that true alliance, true unity, is not by coming together and pretending that we're okay, pretending that we agree, Pretending that, well, everything's okay when it's not. True alliance, true unity is going to come when we all step up and say, here's the, here's the standard that we all must adhere to, we must live by, and that's what's going to bring true unity. It's a strange alliance. I think it's a strange alliance when you have people that are, that are, that are opposing each other and you say, well, I don't expect them to give something up. Yeah, I expect somebody to give something up. If two people who oppose each other are together, it means they've given something up. Listen to, uh, listen to this uh, fellow talking about coming out of, uh, his, his dad coming out of the Methodist church, and that's exactly what he says. Uh, I'm currently in attendance with Baptist Church. I'm in fellowship with Blessed Hope, in fact. Why are you? 
Why am I? Yeah, doesn't the Bible says faith come by hearing and hearing by the Word of God? You didn't hear God say for you to be in a Baptist church. Why are you over there? Just for the community, let us know. Because the Word of the Lord is being preached there appropriately. Well, not, it doesn't tell you about the Baptist church. First thing, rattle out the box, you're inside of a building with people who claim to be God's people, and they don't even have a designation or an, an, an authority to exist. They claim to be Christians. Well, they can claim to be Christians. Jehovah's Witness claim to be Christians. Do you accept them? I mean, your church claims to be Christian. Uh, 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 sir, do you do you claim, do you accept the Jehovah's Witness? No, but we can try the spirits based on the Word of God. Okay, I'm trying y'all spirit. No, no, he was a church, church, he recognize him as a Methodist. So oh, you, we're no. playing games, sir. You know that you adhere to Baptist doctrine, and they adhere to Methodist doctrine, but you're trying to pretend like it don't concern you. No, my father's in attendance with the church that was formerly a Methodist church, but they realized that they weren't strong on the doctrine. So, oh, Christian sir. church now. No, sir. I just can't believe that you said that. My I, can't, I can't believe that you said that. You Why said not? that they are, they realized they weren't strong in the doctrine. Is that another way to say that they were wrong? Well, sure, of course. You said that they, are, they realized they weren't strong in the doctrine. Is that another way to say that they were wrong? Well, sure. You said that they, are, they realized they weren't strong in the doctrine. Is that another way to say that they were wrong? Well, sure. Now, you have just admitted that the Methodist Church is wrong. No, I'm saying that the church that my father was with spoke. Formerly a Methodist. Right. Formerly a Methodist. You can't use one body to speak for the entirety. Okay, well, that particular Methodist church realized, God be thanked, that they were wrong. Is that right? That they just didn't stand for, for instance, sprinkling. Okay, all right. Now, now, sir, I am so thrilled that you said that because I'm in agreement with you that sprinkling is not New Testament baptism. But guess what? The Baptists refuse to preach what Peter and Paul preached. I've never met a Baptist preacher, including yours, that would actually say, when somebody said, Men and brethren, what must we do? Peter responded, Repent and be baptized, every one of you, in the name of Jesus Christ, for the remission of your sins. Now, will your preacher preach that? Let me stop there. Not for repentance of sins. No, that's a law concept. Oh, my. If I can assist you in any way, I want to do that very thing. Till next time, thanks for watching. Always remember to ask what does the Bible say? You get a word from the Lord. Have a good night. In 13, 63 degrees. That's what we have under muggy conditions all across the area. It's misting outside now, but it's been kind of on and off all day. We've got a look at the forecast coming up in just a few moments from Star News on Matt Smith. Don't forget, it's Thursday, and that means it's time for the Rockingham County United Way report. Debbie Moore will be bringing that to us in just a little bit. Plus, we have news from all across the region, including a Danville City official invited to the White House to be part of a summit on what makes Danville unique and what makes other communities unique. And we'll have more on that coming up in just a little bit. And three teenagers arrested in Danville, all part of a burglary that happened on Wednesday. The Danville Police Department is now looking at other burglaries to see if there could be some tie-ins. We've got that coming up in the next little bit. So don't go anywhere. A lot of things to cover right here on Star News. We're going to start out our newscast in Reedsville, North Carolina, over two years following the accident on a major city intersection that brought down the 100-year-old Confederate soldier monument in the downtown area of Reedsville. The monument has risen again. This time, it's in its new home in the city's Greenview Cemetery. An eagle-eyed Star News viewer let us know what was going on, so Star News own Matt Smith went over to find out what's going on with the monument restoration, and here he is with the story. The monument to Confederate war dead that used to set in the circle at South Scale Street and Moorhead Street in downtown Reedsville has been moved to a new home in the Greenview Cemetery. The uh, statue was erected 
adopted by a commercial statue company, fully restored and ready to preside over the graves of the uh, fallen Confederate war dead there in the cemetery. Several onlookers were around to watch the statue going up, and it seems they were very impressed with what they saw happening. He looks beautiful. He looks handsome up there and peaceful. One of the ongoing controversies was whether he was dressed in a Union or a Confederate uniform. Judy Terrell told us she thinks they got it right. So it should make a lot. The statue of deciding which way to turn and facing being this was a cemetery of Confederate cemetery company, Terrell tells us. She said because the cemetery required it, because they call that the front of the cemetery. Just like it is, don't see it somewhere where it belongs. While none of the groups that the restoration of the monument were happy with what they have, the problem has taken place and life can go on. Star News, I'm Matt. Matt, thank you so much. And the state chapter of the United Daughters of the Confederacy plans to have a formal unveiling of the restored monument sometime in the near future. Stay tuned to Star News for more details when they become available. So if you're interested, the soldier is now atop the monument in Reedsville's Greenview Cemetery. It was restored back, uh, was, was put back over the summer month, but there was one, the soldier at the time, now there and an eye on that and that. And we'll also let you know more about the official unveiling of the monument. Well, Rockingham County man had to manslaughter and Dustin Wright pled guilty to voluntary manslaughter and assault with a deadly weapon inflicting serious injury on Tuesday. Wright was sentenced to 59 to 83 months in the North Carolina Department. The 13th of 2012, Wright went to the home of her and an altercation occurred when Wright was to the home. The fight continued as Wright was being escorted off the property with an object causing injuries. Wright stabbed Mark Chad with a knife and died from wounds he received and recovered before law enforcement arrived, but he was later apprehended. Assistant District Attorney Melanie Bridge, whose attorney's office she prosecuted, said deputies and detectives with the Rockingham County Sheriff's Office worked to investigate this case. Their work with the district attorneys ensured that justice was done. So see their Dustin Gilder and assault with a deadly weapon in Flaherty on Tuesday. That was in Rockingham County Superior Court. He was the next bars and a North Carolina state. A lot of other things to cover coming up in the next little bit. We have uh, workforce graduates at Patrick Henry Community College. Red jobs. Look at who graduated from the pro just a little bit. And the Senate resolution night. It looks like that Danville, because of the Riverwalk, part of a to the sea. I'll give you an idea of what all what that's all about coming up in just a little bit. And we've got some holiday events to tell you about, including Rock and Danville holiday events to put you in the mood. Because, well, ready or not, they're coming. And uh, we're now into the very early meno that if you do, behind, so don't do it. We'll have more on these things coming up for you in just a little bit. By the way, is coming to Patrick. Judge Devin Pendleton is directing that thing for performers. So I'll give you the details too. Let's take a look at on this Thursday. Three degrees outside. It's May. You just walk out the door and it only takes you a second out there. It's very humid. And we've got this Mickey Day inside. Of course, many others, you have to go outside and go to work or go to school. Or weather is going to improve and improve dramatically. It would be nice if we had some sun temperatures. Our fingers crossed. And let's find out what Matt Smith has to say about it. Here he is. He's back in the Weather Center to give us a look. In the shivery cold, either star definition and a lot of freezing rain, sleet, snow, all that in our moving into Oklahoma and to the northern part of Alabama. Weather, but cold temperatures definitely here for the weekend. Uh, we'll see whether we get any frozen cold out there, but people are trying to fish there and up in the uh, downtown back and uh, things are chilly up it's just a snow having mercy on the north lake lure is a uh, ch uh, but there is going on scenic over a lot of lot of nice views being uh, look at this this guy's coming down and and ski jump there in the chairlift uh, doing some in the north carolina mountains shows you where that ice storm a pink on the map form going all the way from texas up as far as just south of chicago and that storm is, I uh, think the mountains are going to probably ring out all the uh, dangerous, but we are looking at the possibility of uh, chill at the weekend. No, but it's been going on at Doppler radar.
picture as we uh, look at the weather map. Now, cold front is uh, West Tennessee, and that is the splitter goes right now, all heading up toward the north. Mostly cloudy skies for and, and some below Montana. It's on your forecast, uh, the, uh, those drops of rain, the, all the uh, indications are above freezing. So it's all rain out there. Uh, a lot of people are having to wait. Snow is on the way. And the Scott's tractor still has uh, just what you need, be it a uh, snow deer, Sonic's there. Scott 34921, the place to check for your winter equipment needs. Stick around next at Star News. Come by Tita Green at 105 North Van Buren Road in Eden, North Carolina, for all your golfing needs. Customize your own gift basket. Or how about an assortment of peeing bags at 15% off? Junior and ladies clubs available. Left-handed clubs, launch monitor, and club fitting. Ask about our 10% off gift certificates. That's Tita Green, located at 105 North Van Buren, Eden, North Carolina, for all your Christmas shopping needs. Open Sundays from 1 to 5 for your shopping convenience. For all your holiday shopping needs, come by and see us at Tita Green Golf Shop in Eden, North Carolina, located on Van Buren Road. From our family to yours, we want to wish you a Merry, Merry Christmas, Christmas and a Happy New Year. Year. Colonial Inn and Suites of Reedsville has a special deal for all new extended stay guests. $275 every 15 days, and if you stay 90 days, you get a rebate back on the 91st day. King and double rooms available. Nightly rate of $42, weekend rate $49. They have great amenities including microwave, refrigerator, washer and dryers available, HBO, Showtime. Come by and enjoy staying. Ask for Larry or Shelby when you stop by 2100 Barnes Street, the Colonial Inn and Suites of Reedsville. Super Bowl, faster than a speeding bullet. You are approved. More powerful than a locomotive. Guaranteed approval. Look down on the ground. It's a bird. It's a plane. No, it's another Soul Boss Mobile. Yes, it's Super Bowls who came to Earth with guaranteed credit approval. Powers far beyond that of a mortal car lot. Yes, Superboss can change the course of bad credit, thin payments into smaller amounts. And who disguised as Randy, Angela, Bobby, Jack, Dakota, and Monte? Mild-mannered salesman for a great independent car lot. Fight a never-ending battle for low down payment, lower monthly payment, truth, value, justice, and the American way. Boss Motors now with two locations in Eden, 206 Boone Road, 333 West Meadow Road, the only used car dealership committed to you with its own service center. Need a standing seam or three foot wide metal roof for your home, farm, or business? Max Kendall Lumber and Tin makes 20 colors of 45 year American made metal roofing for all your needs. Max Kendall Lumber and Tin meets or beats anybody's prices on tin. They also have a full line of package buildings and storage buildings. Max also carries rough, dressed, and treated lumber that you can't find anywhere else. And also, he has a drive through lumber yard. Stop by one of Max Kendall's locations in Axton, Danville, Stokesdale, Lynchburg, Corona. Or call them toll free at 888-434-2825 or check them on the web at maxkindlelumber.com. Are you looking for an auctioneer to sell your property? Do you need a real estate broker to sell your home? You don't need to go searching for a big national auction company. Manitou Auctions is right here in your area and is familiar with your local market. Manitou Auctions is a progressive company offering choices for your auction such as buyer's premium to reduce costs, as well as absentee and online bidding. When, when you, you want, want it sold, call, call the pros. pros. That's Manitou Auctions. Let us get you the top dollar. Hi, folks. This is Rockin' Pete at House of Stars, Madison, North Carolina. We wanted to let you know about our new Amish showroom here in Madison. We've added a lot more furniture, outdoor and indoor items. We're now stocking unfinished and finished pine furniture, decorative stars, wind chimes, windmills, lighthouses, shepherd hooks, and much, much more. And as always, we've got 75 plus buildings, carports, and gazebos on hand. Come see us for the best quality and price. And remember, you could be rocking here, or you could be rocking here, or you could be rocking here. House of Stars, Highway 220 South, Madison, North Carolina. 877-623-4700 or visit our website at www.houseofstarsinc.com
three Danville area teen custody Wednesday followed the police department the three taken into custody included one seven to 16 year olds. Now according to the police department it happened just before 10 in the morning a caller they saw three suspicious people in the house of 3rd Avenue West. Investigators responded to when they apprehended two 17 old and one female. Now, a canvas of the area revealed that a house in the 100 block of Downey Lane had and property that is coming from the home was found in the possession of the suspects. Believe that a bur burglary was attempted at 100 block of Starmont Drive, but no entry was made. Now, according to all three, were charged with me and militia. Their names are being three are being held at the WW.